Good morning and welcome to Korea Today live from Seoul. Pope Francis names 19 new cardinals from 12 countries, including the Archbishop of Seoul, Andrew Yum Soo Jung, who will be Korea's third cardinal after an official ceremony in February at the Vatican. We will go all out if the government does not take a step back, says Korea's Medical Association. Details coming up in the headlines. And Korean blockbusters raked in a hit year last year. We'll bring you the numbers on in print. American rappers released a music video made during their trip to North Korea. You can watch it on Hot Click, so stay tuned for that. The many hurdles one must go through to get into college. Once that's out of the way, students in Korea face expensive tuition as well as expensive book prices. What are some options? Now, are you trying to lose weight but simply dread getting on that treadmill? More people are choosing integrated workouts for better balance in the body and to keep things more interesting. Find out more on Monday, January 13th, 2014. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. And good to have you with us on Korea Today on this Monday morning. Catholics and non-Catholics alike here in Korea are welcoming the news of the naming of a new Korean Cardinal Archbishop Andrew Yum Soo Jung. That's right. The decision was announced from the Vatican last night, Korea time, that the Archbishop would be elevated to red hat status along with 18 others. Let's take a look at this historic announcement by the Pope. Yum Soo Jung, Archivesco de Seoul, Korea. The Archbishop was born in 1934 in Ansong, Gyeonggi-do province, the third born of eight children, and made family history in the Korean Catholic Church as his two brothers have also dedicated their lives to priesthood. That's right, and he is known to be a humble and likable man, and in accepting the appointment, he asked for people around him to pray for him. And after the official ceremony in February, he will have become Korea's third cardinal since the appointment of the country's first cardinal, Cardinal Stephen Kim Soo-hwan, in 1969. Well, apparently, he's also a very athletic man, a sportsman known for his tennis skills as well as skiing skills. He will be formally announced as the cardinal on February 22nd. That's right. We have more on this story and other headlines we're following at this hour with Nai Hyun Young. So along with Korea's Archbishop Yom Soo Jung, among the 19 soon-to-be cardinals were a bishop from Haiti and an archbishop from Burkina Faso. The Vatican says Pope Francis's first batch of appointments show his determination to focus on the poor. I'm happy to be appointing 19 cardinals from 12 countries that represent a deep ecclesial relationship between the Church of Rome and the other churches throughout the world. Media reports say the Argentine Pope has looked past the United States and Europe in selecting new cardinals as only eight are from Europe, two each from Africa and Asia, and seven from the Americas, but with none from the U.S. Sixteen of the 19 nominees, including Korea's Archbishop Yum, are under 80 years old, meaning they have the right to enter the conclaves and elect new popes. As mentioned, the official appointments will be made on February 22nd at the Vatican. If the government does not withdraw some of its planned medical policies, doctors say they will start a nationwide strike come March 3rd. If that happens, it will be the first time in 14 years for such a strike to take place. We oppose the government's drive to let doctors conduct remote medical treatments and allow for-profit hospitals to be established under public medical organizations. We also demand a fundamental reform of the distorted health insurance policies. The Medical Association, however, did leave the door open for dialogue, saying they might not go on strike if the government is willing to discuss and make progress on the issue. Now, the Welfare Ministry, although firm on its stance, did say it will actively take part in bridging their differences. In the year 2000, doctors took part in several walkouts throughout the latter half of that year, protesting the government's decision to separate the pres prescribing and dispensing of drugs. 
The South Korean military says it will quote-unquote subdue North Korea with one strike should Pyongyang use the upcoming annual military drills between South Korea and the United States as an excuse to carry out a provocation. In a statement released Sunday, South Korea's defense ministry urged North Korea not to link the regular military exercise with other humanitarian issues such as holding inter-Korean family reunions. Now, stressing the drills have been taking place since 2002, the ministry called for the North to make a sincere effort to improve inter-Korean ties. Meanwhile, Seoul and Washington have finally reached an agreement on shouldering the cost of keeping American troops in South Korea. Seoul will pay 920 billion won or roughly 866 million U.S. dollars to Washington this year, a near 6 percent increase from last year and more than 40 percent of the total cost. Korea has asked Japan to clarify some Japanese media reports that say Tokyo may require its middle and high school textbooks refer to the Korea-controlled Tokto Island as Japanese territory. Summoning a deputy chief at the Japanese embassy in Seoul Sunday, the Korean Foreign Ministry says Tokyo must call off its plans immediately should the reports turn out to be true. Now, accusing Japan of instilling a wrong historical perspective into future generations, the ministry says it will not sit back and simply watch what Japan does. This comes after several Japanese media outlets over the weekend reported that the government is mulling over revising textbook guidelines to say Korea is illegally occupying Dokdo Island in the East Sea. And good morning, everyone. Time for a look through your newspaper headlines. Today's reoccurring story is, as you can see, one that was confirmed last night. Seoul's Archbishop uh, Yom Su Chung has received the honor of being elevated to cardinal by Pope Francis. And there he is there. Tung Ailebo's headline reads, and again, this man. The subheadlines note that he will become the third archbishop hailing from Korea following his predecessors Chung Jin Seok and the late Kim Soo Hwan. The article says the 71-year-old Yom comes from a lineage of faith. He was born sixth of eight children in a family that had kept its faith, faith despite persecution and martyrdom since the early years of Korea's Catholicism in the 18th century. His family was also the first in Korea to see all three brothers become priests, as you heard earlier from Young. Archbishop Yom is known for his sociability and drive and as a religious leader who is in constant prayer. And on that note, let's go ahead and turn to our next newspaper, Joseon Ilbo, uh, which has a front page image showing the Archbishop receiving a private uh, congratulations at Myeongdong Cathedral last night. The caption says Yum's first response was to lift a prayer of gratitude. And as you heard, he also asked for others to pray for him. Now, we'll leave that story there for now and take a swift look through some of the other stories making headlines today. Below is a headline uh, that reads 100,000 Chinese troops training near North Korea's Pictusan Mountain, which is located, of course, on the border of the two countries. Now, the training started on Friday, the article says, which also mobilized thousands of pieces of military equipment. And the site's one source out of Beijing is saying that the massive training is unprecedented in scale and appears to reflect the perceived instability after the execution of leader Kim Jong-un's uncle, Chang Seo. Tech. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Pyongyang Shimun next. Its headline right here reads, highest increase since 2004 in USFK defense cost share. And as you heard in our headlines, the agreement between the two ally nations gives Korea the burden of some 920 billion won this year. That's about $866 million, which is a 5.8 percent uh, hike or more than its contribution last year. The main opposition Democratic Party, though, has called the deal a poor arrangement that doesn't make clear the reason for the cost increase and warned of a strict evaluation at the National Assembly. 
Next up on Chungang Ilbo, let's go ahead and take a look at this headline. It spotlights, uh, spotlights a revision in the works for the nation's inheritance laws, and it reads spouses to get more in inheritance and have tax burden lowered. The change when implemented would change the surviving spouse's immediate share to 50 percent, with the remaining half to be shared 50-50 with the couple's children. And finally, taking a look at our business daily for today, Korea Economic Daily's headline reads, Korean movie fund sees jackpot era. This as several of Korea's silver screen creations are recording a double-digit gain in returns over the past two years, according to the paper. This is a very different picture from the decade before, which had been struggling with losses. Now, citing the Korea Venture Investment Corporation, the paper reports that last year's runaway hit, Miracle in cell number seven took in an earnings of 485 percent and others such as werewolf boy and masquerade more than doubled their investment and an image to help uh, some of us uh, some of you put perspective to the wintry conditions outside some 3,000 people koreans and foreigners alike took on the bone chilling air by undressing to their trunks and jumping into busan's Heunde beach as part of the city's 27th polar bear swim over the weekend Brr. now participants said it was super cold but it also gave them a sense that they can tackle anything this year with that we'll wrap your look at what's in print on this monday next up are your closing numbers from friday's market action There are cold wave advisories issued in many parts of Korea this morning. I got into the car this morning and almost screamed because it was that cold. It's one of those, it's one of those temperature conditions where you can't hold on to the steering wheel because it gets so cold. <laughs> now, the question isn't about bundling up, but how much should you bundle up? Idami joins us with more for today's weather. Good morning. Good morning, Dami. Burr, you can see her breath. Too. <laughs> I can see her shivering a little bit with that mm. mic. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm reporting live from Mapogo Tower. And yes, it is cold. Uh, now, I hope everyone enjoyed your weekend because uh, starting today, the weather is going to get frightful as the cold snap has returned. Right now, here in Seoul, temperatures have dropped down to minus 9.9 degrees Celsius. Burr is uh, the perfect word for the huts right now. Uh, now, like Bing Jung mentioned, there are cold wave advisories being issued all in different parts of uh, the peninsula. However, in Gangwon-do province and Gyeongsangbuk-do province, there are cold wave warnings that are being in effect. Uh, Daegwolyeong is seeing temperatures as, as low as minus 18 degrees. Now, uh, with the cold uh, temperatures, adding on to that, there are sharp gusty winds blowing our way. So our body temperatures are going to feel as cold as, what, minus 14 degrees. So all I can say is bundle up from head to toe. Make sure that uh, there is no part of your skin showing except maybe your face, I guess, or maybe you can wear a mask to cover that up. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the highs for today. Here in Seoul, highs are at a chilly minus 3 degrees. Daejeon at 0, Daegu and Gangneung at 2, Busan at 5, Gwangju at 1, and Jeju at 4 degrees. Now, the Weather Center predicts this cold wave will continue until this Wednesday morning, and conditions will start to grow mild that afternoon. That's all I have for the weather. I'll be back in the latter half. In a vast desert across the state of New Mexico, the world's first commercial spaceport, Spaceport America, is ready to go. Still ahead, Korean architect Baek jun Bum is the man who led this ambitious LEED Gold accredited spaceport. We meet the man behind the ideas and hear where his inspirations and dreams come from. 
Now, the results from last year's college entrance exam have been coming out since the end of December. While some students and parents are celebrating, many are already concerned about the high costs involved in enrolling in a university. The tuition fee is high, but adding to that burden is the price of textbooks. And our reporter Kim chan -ju has more on this story. Good morning. Good morning. Well, average Korean college students spend between 200 to 300,000 won. That's uh, roughly about 300 US dollars. And that's a lot of money considering their monthly spending is just slightly over 400 dollars. So as alternatives, many turn into legal copies of textbooks. So I went down to find out what their thoughts about pricey textbooks and some possible solution to this issue. For some college students, vacation is busier than during their school semester. It's because many of them are busy with their part-time jobs so that they can save up enough money for their various expenses before the semester begins. This college student who will graduate this year says on top of the high tuition, the cost of textbooks each semester adds to the burden. I have to pay close to $200 per month just for the interest of my various student loans. On top of other expenses, it is difficult to pay for these textbooks that cost more than $200 per semester. It's not easy to pay for the books because they are just too expensive. Usually, the price of college textbooks ranges between 30 to 40,000 won or roughly 30 to 40 dollars per book, and the textbook market is worth 700 billion won or 650 million dollars each year. This has led to the long standing custom of making illegal copies of textbooks in university districts. Textbooks are so expensive these days that it's hard to buy them for my studies. Since a lot of my friends get textbook copies from print shops near the university, not many think it's illegal. Since the crackdown on copyright infringement was toughened, many have stopped making textbook copies, but there still exist places like these nearby universities where you can make illegal copies of textbooks. But this is clearly an act of copyright infringement and you can face legal punishment. Last year there was a lawsuit which raised the issue with this customary act of copyright violation. According to Article 30 in the copyright law, photocopying machines designed to provide services for the public must obtain permission from the copyright holder before using publications. Our association is signing contracts with print shops near universities. If businesses without this contract are found to be making copies of books in their entirety, it is considered a copyright infringement. One of the alternatives students have found is second-hand bookshops. There has been a rapid growth in the number of second-hand textbook trading. These bookshops saw 5.6 times more sales since 2010. Also, over 8,000 members have registered with websites where students carry out direct trading of their second-hand books. At this university in Seoul, students can borrow textbooks for one semester for free of charge. This unique program allows students to rent out books once they donate their own. Most textbooks for your major are used just for one semester with the exception of a few. I think it's great that you can save money on textbooks. You can only rent out books from the school library for about two weeks. This library is great because you can borrow the textbook for the entire semester. The library is filled with books on various subjects as well as those for exams and obtaining specific certifications, leaving barely any room on the shelves. Apart from second-hand books, university professors have come together to publish free textbooks to reduce the financial burden that students have, and this is known as the Big Book Movement. These university professors started writing copyright for textbooks, and the number of those interested in joining this movement is increasing. I think this will be huge financial relief for students. We plan to collaborate on writing textbooks like this with the help of 100 professors nationwide, along with students, experts and civic groups. 
So it seems like it's really up to the professors who will decide whether the so-called big bug movement will be successful or not. That's why right. uh, for many professors, it's actually not easy to give up the copyrights of mm. the textbooks that they wrote. But for the big movement, though, about 30 uh, professors nationwide, including those in the field of business administration, law, science, uh, engineering, have all joined in. And um, also Korea's, one of Korea's major conglomerate, along with some uh, philanthropists, to have donated 100 million won for this movement. Uh, meanwhile, Korea Press uh, Foundation said that they will provide any necessary data for professors participating in this movement. Mm -hmm. So uh, as for the future plans for the big movement, they uh, are going to publish and write 100 free textbooks for students mm. in the next three years. Now, used books is always an option. I remember mm. our books were really expensive as well, so we'd go to the used bookstores and buy them. Besides, they had all the highlighting already in there mm -hmm. so you didn't have to highlight anything new which made it easier <laughs> but, uh, but used books have always been around and it seems that uh, this is an option over here as well what are some of the ways that these students are um, tr uh, exchanging, exchanging or going through used book transactions uh, many of them are doing secondhand trade within themselves and also there has been some secondhand uh, book market in the universities like Hanguk University of Foreign Studies or Kyung University where uh, the student body itself holds a uh, Secondhand book market before the semester begins, but however, when the student body changes, so does this plan for the secondhand book market. So uh, it hasn't been held on a regular basis yet mm. in the university. Mm. You know, college students are always tight on money mm -hmm. and on tight allowances. So uh, yes. are the universities or the government doing anything to support them financially? Well, um, I found that the secondhand book website uh, and also the Dream Library that I visited in Sogang University. They seem to have an overwhelming number of students looking for textbooks. So to lessen a student's financial burden, they should be more secondhand book trading in the campus on a regular basis, and also increasing number of e-service and textbook vendor services by the government. Uh, this could be also a solution to preserving copyrights uh, while letting students have material to work with. Mm. Okay. All right, well, sounds great. Uh, we hope students do have more options out there in the futures for um, getting used books or copies of textbooks that they need. Thank you very much. Anjali. Thank you. Still ahead on Korea Today, if you're bored of running on that treadmill day in and day out, there are new ways to work out that's coming up. There are of different paces and combined separate exercises into one. We will show you the latest fitness trends that will keep you going, so stay tuned for that. In the year 2007, the Virgin Group announced plans to make commercial flights to space a reality. And uh, now the spaceport was completed after five years and the launches are expected to begin this year. Mm -hmm. Commercial travel, a space travel within this year. How exciting is that, right? Behind the construction of the world's first spaceport is a Korean architect by the name of Pek Jun Bum. He oversaw the blueprint and the construction of this mega-sized space spaceport. We sat down with him for this interview. This year in 2014, commercial flights to space is finally expected to be realized. And at the center of Spaceport America, where the launches will commence, is Korean architect Baek Jun Bum, who was a part of this project even before the inception of its design. This is first commercial space flight that anyone can buy the tickets and go to the space. Uh, or the people who buy, you know, register for the ticket or uh, pay the deposit for the ticket is that um, this is probably the experience that uh, your lifetime experience. So it's kind of a, 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 as a tourist or astronaut, you are almost like a pioneer. Uh, I think there's about 50 astronauts who's been to the space. So whoever who flies from uh, with Virgin Galactic, there will be the uh, 51st or 52nd. So probably over 10 years, it's going to be much more. You know, there will be a lot more people. But at the time, you can see their attraction. Why you know there are you know, with such price, uh, there are so many people who's been uh, signed up to go to the space. The spaceport is built in the vast deserts of New Mexico in the United States. Architect Pek Chun Bum, who worked mostly in Europe, became one of the first architects to design a commercial spaceport by his team winning the competition for this project. 
The owner's requirement or the client's brief was um, it was kind of a contradictory one when I, when we actually entered the comp uh, competition. They they ask for uh, something quite iconic from the air, but at the same time invisible from the ground. And uh, we had to be very respectful of the uh, New Mexican desert because there was nothing around there. And it, it is uh, a historical area. You couldn't uh, build a building which really shines a lot or stand out too much. And at the same time, they want the building to be quite iconic because it's the first space for, uh, spaceport ever. Because it's something new, uh, a new type of building, and there's no, uh, no such building uh, has been built uh, like that before, we could not really refer to anything. And we had to, every time, uh, reinvent um, uh, make the stories with the clients and develop the clients' requirements uh, together uh, with the clients. And I think that was a difficult part. When approaching from the historic El Camino Real Trail, the terminal's organic form appears as a subtle hill in the landscape. But when viewed from space, it evokes the Virgin Galactic logo of the eye. The design aims to maximize the thrill of space travel for the first space tourists while making a minimal impact on the environment. The design utilized natural sunlight and ventilation systems to maximize energy efficiency in the scorching surrounding desert. With designs inspired by nature, such as flowing water, the cloud patterns and shapes, and the fluid motif of flowers and leaves, Peck says that his reservoir of creativity come from nature and that it always brings him new ideas. I think uh, we, we said, um, you, you said uh, futurist, the word futuristic, and, and then you know, looking like a, uh, blending into the nature. I think blending into the nature makes sense, and it's quite organic. In architecture, you could do a lot of good projects with uh, uh, kind of a square shape or a rectangular shape or a box project, but there is a, probably there is a limit. It has to be a magic box. It has to work with the lights. We have to work with the, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, layer stories because you don't have a fancy a form or the organic form. But whereas the organic, uh, making, uh, making an organic projects or organic shapes uh, in architecture is quite, uh, uh, it's quite easy, but at the same time it's quite difficult to make it look good. Because um, unless you know, it is something that uh, is close to something you see in the nature, now we know it as a constructed word, uh, it is uh, it's something difficult to uh, mimic or actually uh, use that sort of language into uh, a good form. The first project he produced was an interior structure for an automobile showroom. He was highly praised for designing a structure that enhances the dynamic designs of the car, but is also still easy to break down and reassemble so that it could be reused for five additional shows as per the requests of his clients. After 25 years of being overseas, I uh, wanted to try out uh, the, the architecture scene in Korea. And, and how, how the markets are, how the, the clients and how the projects are working since uh, I'm from here. Um, I've, I've done, um, I've been working on a lot of projects in the States, uh, in, in, in Europe, in London, in France, uh, other places in, in Germany and Switzerland, but I've never really done a project in Korea. This was the first time I wanted to come back and uh, work on a construction site and see how the buildings are built and, and their level of finishes and see uh, where is the place I'm going to be in the future to, to gauge, to, I mean, uh, to gauge where, where I'm going to be in the next 10, 20 years. Peck Jin Bum is always open and welcomes new challenges. He has been the source of many breakthrough designs, but still says there's one project he is determined to pursue one more time. I'm working for a, a, a big company, which is a, a shopping mall project uh, in the outskirts of, of Seoul. Eventually, I'll, I'd like to do some project as interesting as Spaceport, but I guess in, in, in Korea they will have uh, that sort of project probably within five years' time or ten years' time, I don't know. But, you know, in, we've already launched the satellites and, and, in, uh, and we had the Naraho uh, launch. So I guess it's, it will be a not far future, you know, future that we'll be doing uh, something similar to the spaceports. I will be uh, uh, honored to participate on that sort of project in the near future.
Good morning, I'm Chan Song Cho and welcome to Hot Clicks. Let's start today with a look at a rising YouTube star that has been appearing a lot lately on various social media platforms. The screen's not working properly right now. Okay, it is right now. So Dave Levine from America has been living in Korea for four years and he does not hesitate to show off his fluency in Korean in his YouTube videos. Let's take a look. 미국에서 온 데이브입니다. 안녕하세요. 호주에서 온샘 해밍턴입니다. Hey, what's up? I'm Dave. Quite funny, isn't he? Uh, he acts out how different a foreigner's Korean language skills are for someone who's been in Korea for four months versus four years. Out of numerous videos on his YouTube channel, the one that got the most views was this video. When saying a goodbye to your friends, that's what a foreigner who's been in Korea for four months will say. But after four years, this is how he would say. But after four years, uh, this is how a foreigner answers the phone after four months in Korea. But after four years, he turns into a typical gruff Korean man. And last, when it rains, this is what a foreigner would say after four months. Oh no, be opening up. And after four years, this is how he feels when he when it rains. <sighs> These are everyday phrases that can be learned through actually living in Korea. He confessed in one of his videos that he dreams of becoming a comedian in Korea. So until then, it seems like we will continue to see more videos of him. Okay, moving on to our next story. For the first time ever in the history of hip hop, a hip hop musician duo from the US, Pac-Man and Peso, shocked the world by traveling to secretive North Korea to make a music video. And they are receiving tons of attention for it. So let's have a look at the video. Talk all the crazy, must say we don't know what's going on. What goes around, comes around. Oh, it's right, never had nothing in my mind. In the two-minute music video on YouTube titled Escape to North Korea, you can see real footage of Pyongyang, its streets, buildings, subways, buses, soldiers, North Korean citizens, and more. It's very eye-catching and intriguing with diverse scenes of North Korea. One funny fact is that the music video was funded entirely by the crowdfunding site Kickstarter. They raised more than 10,000 US dollars. Even a famous Wall Street hedge fund manager donated a large sum of money for this project. Well, I'm curious to see what other reactions these hip hop musicians will receive in the future. The internet is buzzing with pictures of 33 wood scarving sculptures that took 10 years to make. Right now you can see them in real life at the Hangaram Art Museum Gallery at the Seoul Art Center for free. Well, these are heavenly creatures in Buddhism uh, that are thought to fly around in heaven playing musical instruments and throwing flowers while dancing uh, as an act of praising and admiring Buddha. It's known that most of the time these angels are only drawn in a flat surface, such as paper or on a Buddhist temple bell, but this time they were carved from pine tree wood uh, using carving knives only, so you can only imagine the excessive amount of time and effort put into these masterpieces. Well, many people are marveling over how delicate these wooden sculptures are, so for those of you in Korea, you should definitely pay a visit to the Seoul Art Center and see them for yourselves. They are uh, certainly just beautiful to look at. Now let's switch gears a bit for our last story. Don't you just love uploading pictures of food on Facebook or Instagram? Various online communities are flooded with pictures of food and today we bring you some of the best restaurants in Korea that are getting attention on the internet for offering the biggest portions. This mega-sized waffle is sold at a pancake chain restaurant. They say this portion is even hard for four people to finish. This is a single order of chocolate bingsu. Two people can take up the challenge to finish this bingsu in 30 minutes. If they succeed, it's on the house, but if the customers are able, unable to finish, then they have to pay roughly 14 US dollars and an additional $5 penalty. 
Next, we have a spicy noodle soup with octopus and abalone, sold at a spicy noodle soup restaurant in Incheon. This restaurant is so popular, customers always have to stand in line to get a taste. In addition, there is tangsuyuk or sweet and sour pork, pizza, fried chicken, hamburgers, and more mega-sized portions that are surprising many internet users. <laughs> wow, why so much food? That's my question. I mean, of course, everyone wants to overindulge sometime. I every time, but <laughs> <laughs> but why so much food? Uh, well, every restaurant has its own reasons, definitely, but most of them do it for the marketing effect because uh, when people learn that they can get a free meal uh, as long as they complete the challenge, then they tend to uh, tell other people about it, spread the news mm -hmm. of this event, so uh, more people end up eating at this restaurant out mm -hmm. of curiosity. It's like the food challenge, kind of a publicity type Just of thing. Just see the size of that pizza, though. <laughs> it's, it's, it's humongous. really mind-boggling. Right. I know. Have you taken up any challenges like that, Young? Uh, eating oh. challenges? <laughs> Oh, oh, that right. question you know, is directed at Young. Young Thank and you for that, but surprisingly, I can only have maybe like two hot dogs maximum or something mm, like that. Yeah. So I can't really eat that much. Is a hot dog like this big, maybe? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> well, uh, this is all I have for you today on Hot Clicks. I'll see you guys back here next Monday. And back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Song Cho. And the, yeah, that's pizza was humongous. I can probably <laughs> use. Finish maybe one slice, but one here's slice. right here's someone who can finish the whole plate of that whole pizza. You I know, bet people you. think I might have the biggest appetite, but no, 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 uh, no, no, Idamia, no. especially after That's going right. on the field on cold weather, <laughs> she can come back and eat a lot right, more. Than Idami I can. joins us from a special alley here in Seoul. Back to you, Dami. Yes, that's right. I do have quite the appetite. Uh, I am back reporting live from Yeonnamdong Mapogus Hall. Now, Yeonnamdong received its name as it is located in the south of Yeonhidong. It's also known as the restaurant alley for drivers. So that's one of the main reasons as to why Yeonnamdong is so famous is because of all of the Giza Shikdang or restaurant, um, dr uh, excuse me, rest uh, drivers restaurant. Um, now, now, so I'm at one of the restaurants right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the kitchen because there are quite a few workers uh, busy out and about this morning. Now, the Kisa Shikdang or restaurant for drivers, uh, that mainly being for taxi drivers and other in the transport industry, uh, come here to the Kisa Shikdang as they are known to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now this restaurant here, their main customers, like I mentioned, are taxi drivers. Uh, and this particular restaurant has been here for 25 years now. And what we're seeing right now is one of their main dishes. They're cooking up some gui or grilled pork. Oh, it looks delicious and it smells delicious as well. So if we take a look at their second most popular menu, it's none other than tongtejige or palak stew. Oh my goodness, all I, all I can say is that my appetite is um, <laughs> really running right now and I'm getting very hungry. So let's go ahead and step out into the actual Kiza Shikdang Alley. So right now, this is the center of the Kiza Shikdang Alley. Um, but just to talk a little bit more about this alley itself, now to taxi drivers here in Korea, these Kiza Shikdang are not just any ordinary restaurant to them. Uh, the taxi drivers don't have official office hours. So whenever they don't have a customer, then they take quick breaks whenever they can and the Kisa Shikdang is the perfect place to come for a rest or it's more like a rest area. Now right now we're at a Sundipuk restaurant. It's also known as Korean Blood Sausage Soup. Um, let's go ahead and go inside where it's nice and warm because it's really cold today. So the taxi drivers, they can come here uh, to take a rest, like I said, go to the restroom or talk to other drivers or maybe exchange some cash or change, etc. Now, uh, the reason why Kisa Shikdang are, that's one of the reasons why as to why Kisa Shikdang are open 24 hours a day. Now, now, one of the reasons why they're so popular is because, well, they give you a large portion and the price is affordable as well. So not only do drivers come here, but there are many regular people that come and find themselves here as well just to enjoy a nice hearty meal. 
Now, uh, these days, I know a lot of people, including me, I'm guilty as well, a lot of people tend to skip breakfast. It is a very important, vital meal of the day. Uh, why not come on by if you live here in Yeonidong and have a delicious meal? Or if, you have, or if there is a Kisa Shikdang near your neighborhood, then you should definitely go there as they are open 24 hours a day. The food is delicious and also they give you a large portion and it's reasonable. That's all I have for now. I'm Idami, Korea Today. Now, believe it or not, it's already been nearly 12 years since South Korea went on a miraculous run at the 2002 World Cup. Until this day, the man who led the way for the Taegok Warriors is still considered a legend here in the nation. And when that man, Gus Hiddink, has a press conference, it's going to be a lot of people on hand. Now, on Sunday, with some of his former players behind him at Yong Pyo as his interpreter, Hiddink stated that manager Hong myung bo is a worthy head coach for the national team and that he's a proven coach. When asked about the upcoming 2014 World Cup in Brazil, the 2002 national team head coach stated that although Group H might seem like an easy group, Russia and Belgium is very talented and that Algeria is a very underrated team. He added that the current team should play very aggressively on the offense during the upcoming World Cup. Well, if you thought the recent success of South Korea's bobsleigh team was a fluke, well, think again. This time, the Koreans won gold in the four-person bobsleigh event. With the seventh round of the America Cup taking place in Lake Placid, U.S., the team of Won Yun Jung, So Young Jin, Jung Jung Lin, and So Young Woo finished with a combined time of 1 minute 53.52 seconds to win Korea's first ever four-person bobsleigh gold. With the gold medal finish, Korea will earn a ticket to the upcoming Sochi Winter Olympics. And moving on to some Sunday's KBL action, the KT Sonic Broom cruised past Won Ju Dongbu Promi 83-79 with the Incheon Etilan Elephants, beating the Seoul Samsung Thunders in a close game 75-70. So with that said, let's take a look at the highlights between the Seoul SK Knights and Anyang KGC. Now, first quarter of the game led by Oh Sae-gun, six points in the quarter. KGC takes a slim 21-19 lead before outscoring them 23-20 in the second quarter. Take a 44-39 lead going into halftime. He won the second half of the game. SK tried to rally back in this game. And in the fourth quarter, Aaron Haynes lights it up for the SK Knights. But the rally is cut short as KGC hangs on to take this game 83-79. And now finishing things off with some Sunday's V-League action, the IBK Altos easily beat the struggling Hyundai Hill State in a straight sets, 3-0 over on the women's side. They won an epic match between the Hyundai Capital Skywalkers and the Kepco Vic Storm, so let's take a look at the highlights. Now, first set of the match, Hyundai being Hyundai, cruised through with the final set score of 25-21 thanks to Liberman Algomez's offense and defense. But all of a sudden, Kepco answers back with Chung Gwang Yin tearing it up on the court take the next two sets, 25-23 and 25-18. Kepko one win away from an upset win here, but the Skywalkers hang on to take the fourth set, 30-28. And the fifth set, thanks to Liberman Algomez and his 45 attack points on the day, Hemde Capital Skywalkers take the set, 15-13, and the match, three sets to two. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs.
According to one research company, the most popular sport enjoyed by men for exercise is soccer, and women enjoy going walking. But regardless, exercise is exercise, and it is tough, especially when you're doing the cardio. Running on the treadmill can be tough. And uh, Chamina joins us to talk about some alternative exercises. Good morning. Good morning, Mina. Good morning. Yeah, we talked about a couple weeks ago that many people, their New Year's resolution for 2014 was to get into shape, lose those extra pounds. And I feel like many are finding that just being on the treadmill can be a little redundant. Mm. So we're seeing that this year a trend in workouts is mixing things up. And we're going to be finding out how people are doing these. They're mixing exercise so they're getting a real full workout and really maximizing their workout this way. So let's take a closer look at this. Weight training is the most popular way to exercise indoors in Korea, but doing the same routine day in and day out can get After boring. After doing the same exercise for a while, you heat a plateau and things slow down. The weight doesn't come off as easily as well, so it's more difficult. Boring workouts can lead to more stress, so there needs to be a certain mechanism to break out of this, and that's to make sure you continue working out and enjoy your exercise more. Park ji chose boxing. I recommended going to nearby parks to change the scenery, or you can change up your workout and do fun activities like rock climbing or swimming. These are effective ways to get out of your slump. According to Statistics Korea, the number of fitness centers in Seoul are on the rise each year. As more people become interested in exercising, quote-unquote fun workouts are gaining popularity. On the other hand, new methods of weight loss spill out all the time, but the flood of dieting regimens also raise questions. Among the new diet trends, combined workouts are becoming the new trend. It's not just about walking or running. These various workouts pique your interest and make you want to oh, wow. try it out. That pole dance fitness looks so much fun. <laughs> It's difficult. <laughs> Probably. One type of combination workout is the Zumba dance, combining stretching with Latin dance moves. I did this in Jeju on holiday. Mm -hmm. I did it as well. <laughs> it's you been can't 10 see it, years <laughs> now since it was first introduced in it. Korea. Okay, everyone, so I'm about to start my first Zumba class. I'm very nervous, but excited at the same time. Let's see how I do. Let's check it out. See your Zumba skills. Don't look too hard. <laughs> <laughs> your feet move non stop, so, due to the intensity of the workout, you can burn up to a thousand calories in a one hour Zumba dance wow. class, supposedly. One thousand calories, that's like three burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I would say maybe two. Meanwhile, you burn burgers. 474 calories doing aerobics, 280 calories bike riding, 250 calories running, so there's a big difference. It's an intense oh, workout. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was fun, it was a lot of fun. Am I supposed to keep going? I must die. <laughs> Zumba dance is a favorite among dieters because it's an effective and enjoyable weight loss program. You're good. You're enjoying yourself, most importantly. I got them. Ooh, a round of applause for me now. So are you a regular member now? <laughs> no. <laughs> With Zumba dance, exercising is no longer a chore. It becomes a fun activity. Another combination workout, CrossFit, which mixes ways to improve muscular strength, cardio, respiratory endurance, and these days, more health clubs are offering these CrossFit training programs. It's famous in Korea for getting singer and actor Rain in stellar shape for his film, as well as keeping actress Clara in top shape. Many exercise enthusiasts seek out CrossFit training to intensify their workout regimen. Among them is Hyun Ji Won. She said she chose CrossFit to work on her ab muscles and get more toned. 
So this workout is perfect for just once or twice a week. It's a combination of various exercises, so a lot of running involved as well as push-ups and other exercises that forces you to use all the joints in your body. It's an intense workout, yeah, and it's very popular among women, though, who want to lose weight, of course. Oh. <laughs> you have to be careful with that, though. There's some uh, middle-aged folks that go and push themselves a little too hard. Mm, absolutely. This is a very intense workout, so everyone seems exhausted at this point, as you see. Hyun ji says she has another exercise session to go to, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> she really takes care of herself. <laughs> ah, the joy of yoga after an intense workout. Currently, Hyun ji is alternating between these two methods of exercise, and as long as time permits, she tries to do both workouts in a day. I'm doing both workouts at the moment. Yoga involves a lot of stretching, so it's good for correcting your posture and getting rid of excess fat. CrossFit involves a lot of muscle activity, so I burn a lot of calories. Since combining both workouts, I've lost a lot of body fat. The trend these days involves doing at least two different exercises or combining two or more to create a new one. So will this trend last? There are many positive aspects to exercising, but also negative aspects as well. By improving the negatives and enhancing the positives, workouts become a fun activity. So I think that's why people started combining two or three workouts, and this has led to this combination workout trend. So the um, commonly known traditional method would be doing resistance training and doing some cardio afterwards to burn off the rest of the calories that you have. But you're mixing this whole thing together. What's the effectiveness of mixing it together, going um, alternating back and forth? Yeah, exactly. A typical workout would uh, include, uh, you know, warming up and all that sort. But right now we're seeing the trend being that it's intense from start to finish mm -hmm. and in a shorter time frame. So that's why it's being more effective targeting just the whole body all at once. And to put it in perspective a little bit, um, according to a study done by Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, it said that on a stationary bicycle indoors, mm -hmm. a seven and a half, just intense workout for seven and a half minutes straight, it burns the same amount of calories as a two and a half hour low intensity workout. Whoa. So, I mean, this is according to a study. We're no health experts here, but it just shows where the trend is coming from and where this idea of just getting it all at once in a short amount of time might mm. be effective. Right, but I mean, having two workout sessions in one day, though, it's that, that lady that we saw, Hyun Jun, she's one tough cookie. Yeah. But let's talk about how you did. <laughs> yeah. Mina, well, in your Zumba dance, how was it? It was a lot of fun. It incorporated, obviously, a lot of different things. So being a beginner, I was struggling a lot, but it was very enjoyable only because it just doesn't get boring and I think that's mm. a big problem that a lot of people face when they're in the gym and just on the treadmill for a really long time. It incorporates all different sorts of Latin dances from the cha-cha, the salsa and so forth and you're just always on your feet so it was mm. a lot of fun personally. I know you guys did Zumba, I heard, right? Well, I tried it very long time ago. We did it on thoughts? the program, oh, too. Did you? <laughs> really basic stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you did say you wanted to die. You're about to die. And the other person also said, oh, I guess it's really exhausting. Anything else, maybe less vigorous, any combination workouts for? Me, that, I, just, I'm not, I don't want to die. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. While we're on the topic of combination workouts, there is another one called body art. And this mm. is a new trend these days. This incorporates Pilates and oh, wow. yoga and muscle exercise in it. And it doesn't just shape your body, but it's Oof. supposed to relax you and physically train you at the same time. In Korea, body art is becoming more famous since uh, model Jessica Gomes and K-pop group Beast have become their promotion models. So in Korea, it's making waves, it seems. Yeah. I want to have a body like Jessica Gomez, like we saw in the report, right? <laughs> mm, what a body. And it's a lot more relaxing. Right, right. Compared to the high-intensity workouts we were okay. seeing in the video mm. and, the, and the, the exercise that I participated in okay. personally. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing this report for us. Thank you so much for having me.
All right, that's all we have prepared for you on this Monday morning. All right, so you have no excuses. Go ahead and hit the gym today. Right, have that body, can, right? right? <laughs> all right, thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.